Please the jury find the defendant, Michael A. Mattioli, not guilty. Dated this date, the 10th day of November, 2023. And signed by the four persons. And we start with this breaking news. Former Milwaukee police officer Michael Mattioli found not guilty in the death of Joel Acevedo. And happening right now, we have a live picture outside the courthouse where the family attorney, has. the I mean, family of Joel Acevedo's attorney, is speaking. Let's listen in right now. Um, in bringing attention to Joel Acevedo, so we're really thankful for their strength um, and the supporters who have stood behind his family for three and a half years. Um, I will also tell you that, you know, I will, they will speak and kind of tell you, you know, just their, their feelings. But I will say that, you know, we've got a lot, we've come a, we've come a long way. Um, and we would expect, and hopefully this case sets a precedent, that when an officer does something that is questionable to the family, to the community, to the city of Milwaukee, that they are at least prosecuted. And that we undergo a process as we just went through this week. So again, uh, we thank you for all the coverage um, to this very uh, tragic situation. Um, and this family is happy that at least we are at a point of now getting closure. Um, we will continue to move forward. They will definitely have more things planned to kind of keep Joel's names al alive so that no other family has to go through and endure what they did for the last three and a half years. With that being said, we're going to um, allow the family, uh, both Maribel and Jose Acevedo, speak in their son's behalf. There is there is a lot of mixed emotions, of course, you know, um, you know, you lose your your son to such a um, tragic incident as um, facts and truth, in my knowledge, knowing my son is my truth. Um, evidence is there. Um, we don't, I don't understand all things, even, even him not being here. There's a lot of questions. There's not a lot of answers, but there's peace that I can find. Mm -hmm. There's peace that they can't take because I know Joel is home. Yes. He is home and that's my victory and it's my closure. And I thank God for that. I feel different. I feel what was the jury's listening to. The facts were there. Um, they came to their decision, and I, I, I totally disagree with it. Um, Joel was never the aggressor. I don't know why that didn't come out in court. If anything, he was being attacked by three individuals. The so-called Mattioli's friends that they use as witnesses. So you tell me how fair is that for my son? But at the end of the day, I still stand on the truth. I stand on the word of God. And no matter what decision they made, at the end of the day, I know what's true. And I hope God have mercy on them. Did you call this closure at all? Um, there's, you know, it's closure because We've been waiting for this moment for three and a half years. Um, it's been stressful on all of us and my kids, um, my wife and I, and we've been trying to continue on living our lives, making sure we're okay. Um, but also, you know, I got my kids I got to worry about. I got my grandkids to take care of, and we want to show them what's right. Nobody didn't. You know, the courts never heard, the jurors never heard who Joel, who Joel was, mm -hmm. the love he had. And, and to make it even more clear, Joel's heart still lives. This is his, his last beat. That was his last heartbeat. He made a picture of it, and the recipient is living very well. You had told us previously that you wanted justice. Do you feel like you got that today? No. 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 I, the justice wasn't today. No, it was not. I know there's a civil case, as your lawyer mentioned. What's mm -hmm. next for you two as, as a family, you and your family? Well, we got to just keep moving forward, keep Joel's name alive, and and, and hopefully uh, through this tragedy that, um, you know, there's other parents out there, they lost their kids or they're losing their kids, that 
um, that they get the strength that we have from not only the, the people in the community, our family member, um, but first of all, from God. Mary Bell, you mentioned that you have found peace through this. Yeah. How so? Well, my faith base, of course. God's promises, right? Um, I believe that um, there is an eternal life, a spiritual life, where um, I believe that Joel continues to live on. And um, his heart that is here on earth, which is the physical part, lives on also. So that's my peace. And you said that there was a lot of truth that came out in this trial that you as a family didn't know before. Can any of you talk about one big piece of evidence that you guys didn't get your hands on before you may use in the civil trial? Uh, well, I think it was good that the officer, uh, former officer Mattioli admitted that he was intoxicated, um, that he wasn't aware of how much pressure he was administering um, on Joel Acevedo at the time. I think that's important. In a civil case, obviously, there's a different standard. All we have to prove in that is that his force was excessive. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really go into criminal intent. It doesn't go into what he thought or whether it was an accident or so forth. You know, we believe that we can easily meet that burden on, mm -hmm. on the civil side of it. Um, one thing that we didn't get that I was expecting to get in this case was what did Joel allegedly steal? Mm -hmm. We sat in trial for a whole week, and we've been waiting three and a half years to find out what did Joel Acevedo steal? What was in Mr. Mattioli's pockets that Joel Acevedo is alleged to have taken? That's an answer that we leave this courtroom with without those answers. So again, um, hopefully we will find that out one of these days. It's a very tragic situation. Um, I think as it has been said in the court, there are no winners. Um, I think it's tragic for, obviously, this family, um, um, Matty, Michael Mattioli as well. Uh, but hopefully we can start the healing process and, in, mm -hmm. and, and ensure that this type of situation doesn't occur again. Are you satisfied with the case the prosecution presented? I think that, you know, the prosecution, there, there can always be ways for us to kind of assess in things that we might have thought should have been done differently. I can tell you this, that at the very beginning that this family thought that one of the witnesses that they alleged, um, specifically uh, Mr. Jankowski, um, who was holding the legs of Joel Acevedo while Michael Mattioli was obviously restraining the top portion, should have also been prosecuted. Um, we thought it was hard and we were never able to understand how could Michael Mattioli be charged criminally for the upper portion of restraining Joel Acevedo while we know that Andrew Jankowski held his legs. So that's something that we thought um, we took issue with at the very beginning. Um, but again, we're just happy at this point that at least he was prosecuted. Uh, and again, we just hope this sets as a standard um, that other officers in the future are prosecuted similarly. Where does that civil case stand right now? So the civil case was, um, it's still pending. Um, uh, it was some delay in that, uh, in the litigation um, while the criminal uh, case was still uh, pending as well. So now that this is concluded, um, we believe uh, we are now, the case is ripe to move forward on the litigation on the civil case. What's next? Is there going to be a vigil tonight still at 6 o'clock, do you think? On 6 in Greenfield. On 6 in Greenfield? Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Did the defense lawyer ask what a civil and you no, have been listening live hear, as the family of Joel Acevedo uh, reacts to this afternoon's breaking news. Ever acts, uh, Mr. That former Milwaukee stolen. police officer Michael Mattioli has I been mean, found so not guilty of first of degree reckless homicide in this case involving that, the death you know, of Joel Acevedo. Of the of the and you heard from uh, Joel Acevedo's parents talking about how they drew strength yeah, from their faith uh, to get through this very stressful uh, situation and the emotion, of course, uh, you know, at the, the loss the of their son. Yeah. We want to go inside the courtroom now. Our Bruce Harrison has been following this trial uh, since day one when it began on Monday, and he joins us live now with more on the decision today from the jury. Bruce. And Susan Ryan, good afternoon. It was an incredibly tense day in court, everyone knowing this could be the final day of the trial. Um, some serious anxious moments for both families in the courtroom, especially after not a couple hours ago, after four hours of jury deliberations, court reconvened. The judge came in and said the jury is deadlocked. Well, then 
what happens next. The jury's brought back in. The red instructions to continue working on reaching an agreement. The families come and go from the courtroom, more anxiety, and then within an hour we actually did finally get that guilty uh, verdict, non-guilty verdict. I sat immediately to the left of uh, the Mattioli family when that verdict was read. Um, it was immediately uh, tears, hugs, uh, loud sighs of relief when they realized Michael Mattioli was uh, determined not guilty by the jury. There was response, of course, on the other side of the courtroom as well from the Acevedo family. Equal emotion, tears, um, frustration, uh, learning that after this powerful, intense trial, uh, they weren't going to receive the, the justice, at least in court, they had hoped for. Uh, you heard from the family, this isn't quite the outcome they were expecting. Uh, there's still a civil case pending. The, uh, the state also disappointed in the outcome. We'll see what happens next. Susan, Ryan? You know, Bruce, as we were watching the verdict being read and once it was clear the jury found Mattioli not guilty, he too was very emotional. What was it like in the courtroom as you were watching that part of uh, the case unfold today? Sure, yeah, his, uh, his defense attorneys um, helping support and put an arm around him. He was emotional, crying as well when that decision was reached. Uh, and, and then over the course of, of three to five minutes, I would say, as the decision settled in, Mike, Michael Mattioli uh, was smiling. He was looking at his family uh, through the glass, reassuring them as they prepared to reunite them um, after the court was adjourned and he was, he was dismissed from this case. Uh, a range of emotions, and like I said, the Mattioli family, very emotional as well, as well as the Acevedo family. The court uh, handled this uh, very professionally. They let the Acevedo family leave first in the hallway. They were very emotional. Once that was cleared up and the Acevedo family left the building, then the Mattiolis cleared out as well. They quickly uh, brushed by us. They were not interested in giving any comment about this decision. They all have left now. Susan, Ryan. And Bruce, as you just reported, less than an hour before the verdict was read, the judge uh, d did learn that the jury was deadlocked and that the judge had to give them some instruction to get back to work and, and try to reach this verdict. That happened pretty quickly. Was there a lot of chatter uh, in that in-between time? Was it surprising how fast the verdict was reached after that development? It's hard to say, Ryan, what, what was going on behind the scenes. Was this an 11 to 1 situation? Was it a 10 to 2? Uh, how many jurors were in the minority uh, not ready to, to agree with that not guilty verdict? But yes, uh, a change of course pretty quickly after they went back to chambers to continue to deliberate. The state had made its case that Mattioli's actions were reckless and led to the death of Joel Acevedo. The defense really maintained that this was a case of self-defense, a man defending his friends as well as himself in his own home. After being attacked, he was acting in the way he had to in self-defense. It's unclear what the jury decided. Was this a self-defense, not guilty verdict? Did they not, uh, did they agree with the defense that pre-existing health conditions they talked about contributed to the death, not necessarily Mattioli's actions? Those are some things we may never learn. But to your point, yeah, it was a quick turnaround. And now we have the not guilty verdict. Our Bruce Harrison reporting live for us at the Milwaukee County Safety Building. Bruce, thanks so much.